This video will demonstrate an uh, interesting setup for a four, four remote guest podcast using one mumble server and the podcast host will use four individual mumbles to separate each guest's audio. Let's uh, demonstrate the audio first and then we'll talk about the setup a little bit. This allows you to place the mix minus since we have separate inputs and outputs for each guest. And Reaper does a very good job of also allowing you to use uh, some effects, VST effects, or some DSP plugins to help out with the audio. So for guest one, we're going to uh, open that up. Understand, because in real life, people mun mumble, mumble and stutter and have heavy accents, and this won't work in voiceover. We have to understand what you're saying, otherwise people won't buy the product. So the standards are a little looser today, a little more casual than they used to be. That's the point that I want to make. And for the second guest, Aaron, I wasn't really ready to plug what down Todd has to say. another $800 for another chair. So I'm going to wait a little bit, uh, shop around, but Eurotech continues to be like the number one seller here, at least locally. The guy told me there's still nothing that compares to the to the Eurotech chairs. So audio sounded good. The uh, server is in California and uh, I'm hosting this interview uh, tutorial from Missouri. So it's a bit of a trip over the internet and that's what the audio audio sounds like from here to there and then back to here. Music over mumble even though it's mono. Another guest, the fourth guest. Right, right. Okay, the this door. next link is over to uh, opensource.com, uh, sponsored by Red Hat. Uh, with a and so everybody has audio coming in individually from several different mumbles. Those are all the mumbles as the, the host that you have to set up using mumble-m commands. And then you just add a different user. So I here I'm host to guest one, host to guest two, host to guest three, and host to guest four. So that's the names that I have listed here. And each Input and output is using a different ALSA loopback card in the plug HW, and I'll go over that now. So that's how you get the connections to go into Mumble. So the command structure, first of all, you have to make the loopbacks and reboot. So go to your etc. modules as... Uh, and put this in there. So usually you have to do sudo gedit or something like that and, and navigate to here to etc. modules and then add this command right there. I'm using six different loopbacks so you have to do enable equals one comma one comma however many loopbacks. Each one stands for another cable. If it's just sound to loop it's just going to be one cable. But I wanted six so that I could use the last four for the input and output of each guest. As it loads in the audio adapter command that to do that is this jack load I'm calling this particular instance the mobile guest 3 audio adapter dash I in the hardware I'm using the fourth loopback loopback 4 here and here's the uh, a play dash L command I have those are all the loopbacks and any other extra sound cards I have. The Intel is the Realtek HD audio sound card on this laptop. I have an HDMI as well and I also have a UCA Behringer 222. 
but the ones I'm interested in are what numbers here. So we're doing four zero here, and on Mumble we're doing four one. So that's what you have to look for. So uh, for instance, here's loopback four one. So I go down to plug HW, look for four one, which is at the top since I'm using it. Most of these others are a little bit glitchy in how they work, but this plug HW seems to work really well with the audio adapter command. It's nice because it matches the one you ask for, and you only need one cable since Jack Audio splits up the input and output so you don't get a feedback. You choose the same card for the output, 4, 1. Plug HW, there's 4, 0. We don't want that one because that's the first one we use in the audio adapter command. So we use the 4, 1 command to connect to the appropriate loopback here. So loopback 4, 1. And you just do that for each loopback on each mumble. Log in and move to the room of that guest. Everybody can still chat with everybody, of course, in Mumble, but you're not going to hear the audio from Mumble itself from each other guest. They're going to hear it from you. You're going to redirect the audio coming into your station using Reaper. So each guest's audio comes into Reaper, and I can determine over here on the inputs for each guest what I want them to hear. I'll go over the mix minus in a second, but it's just a wiring. It's very easy to wire this in Jack Router. So for the microphone, it comes in one and goes out one. I'm also using this DSP plugin, which I like. It's a noise gate compressor limiter and does it every does everything and it works pretty well in Reaper. And the, these are my settings over here. And this will be in the show notes if you want to add that to your Reaper plugin list. So my microphone goes to each mumble input. And it also is going to this meter here so I can measure the VU, the uh, amount of uh, audio volume, and the spectrum analyze, the analysis of the spectrum here, and also a little bit of a scope display on my speaking and any other audio that I have playing here will go to this meter so I can kind of keep a visual eye on what's what's happening with the audio and to do this I'm using the breakaway RTA We're using the default wave in and this will default to pulse audio in this case the way I have it set up so I have every audio output going here so that I can watch it on this meter I also have the meter always on top so if I can still click these volumes here and it won't disappear the meter here and I don't have to hunt it down again. Okay, so back to the the alignment here. So for desktop audio I'm also using pulse audio and we have that playing through this week in tech. Let's turn that up a bit. Point. And what Ooh, is an insert point? Yeah, <laughs> it can be. An insert point is a place where it's typically after the preamp in, in, the, in the console. So, so let's say you've got an instrument level input. So if you wanted to play some audio, and that's just an example, it's coming in here 7 and 8, and it's going out 7 and 8, not only to my sound card, but to every guest connected to mobile. Since it's stereo, I have both the 7 and 8 go into each mono mumble here. Now for the mix minus, you want the audio from guest one to go to two, three, and four. So the audio from mumble guest one is coming in Reaper track three and out Reaper track three. It's not going to anybody else yet because I wanted to draw this for the video. So you just click and hold and drag to guest two, guest three, guest four. So now the audio from guest one goes to guest two, three, and four, but not back to itself, so you don't get the audio feedback. So that's the that's why that's how you get that minus in there. So now for guest two, it's coming in four, 
one out for, but not to anybody else yet. So we want guest two audio to go to one, three, and four. Guest so track four to one, three, and four. So guest two now goes to mumble guest one, three, and four. And same thing for guest three. It's in five and out five. But we want it to go to one, two, and four. Okay, there it is, but not the three, because we don't want that audio feedback. You want the guests to hear their own audio back again delayed. and That's where the minus kicks in. That's how you draw this. Okay, so now for the last guest. It's Reaper Track 6. It's not going anywhere yet, but we want it to go to 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. But not 4. So now we've done the mix minus for everybody. So let's take this up a little bit. Demo. Well, if you're getting started, you know or that a demo is losing control of your unmanned aircraft. Toolkit, but where do you start? How do you put a great demo together? All right, so now I'm hearing everybody, but I have the mics blocked on all the mumbles here. And as I unblock it, of course, everybody talking at the same time there. Sounds all jumbled up, but that's just a, as an example of how to do that. So if everyone's not talking at the same time, then everybody can hear everybody else when they speak. And if the latency isn't too bad, on a mumble, it's really good if you have the proper settings and you're able to uh, keep the jitter buffer low and you keep the output delay low and the audio per packet low and you have to have the advanced settings clicked here. So again we'll review here. So for the audio input we're using the loopback cards plug HW version. So whatever you have on the command here which at which is always has the second number as a zero, you want the second number on the mumble input and output to be one. And that matches it up. And with the audio adapter command, it lets you lose just one individual loopback cable to get, to get them both. So I don't have to have loopback two, loopback three, like in some setups. So I found that very convenient and worth the extra latency with that ring buffer at 4096. And we have the quality all the way up, audio per packet. That gives you the fastest, being at 10 milliseconds. The higher you pull it up, the little bit more latency. And we turn the audio processing and off. Noise suppression and the max amplification. We found that works a little bit better if you have your audio going into the mumble input at a correct volume, which is just a little bit below this slider here, this voice hold slider. So as where you see it, it's just about right. And if you keep it right about there, not too low below that, or not too high above that, you'll have the maximum volume before the mumble AGC kicks in. If the mumble AGC kicks in, which is okay, but it can squash everybody else's audio. So if everybody is at a certain volume, you won't kick in an AGC circuit. The AGC also distorts the audio slightly in some cases, so that just takes it out of the mix. We found that to be about minus 14.5 dB on some of our testing, so it's fairly close to that. So you, if you can advise your people how to get that much volume into their mumble input, they won't stress out the mumble AGC it also causes a little bit of a delay sometimes since it, it causes mumble to work a little bit harder. The mumble output against that second number is always a one and you just have to match the loopback. 
I have the jitter buffer all the way down, output delay all the way down, and that works pretty good for the connection with our server. So if you're getting some pops and clicks, sometimes you can turn that up a little bit and try it that way. But it just adds a little bit of latency to whoever does that. So that's pretty much the uh, the setup here. It takes a little bit of work. One nice thing about Carla, you can save it. So load up everything, and then when you open up what you saved, it'll wire it up for you again, which is pretty helpful. And I think that's pretty much everything I was hoping to show. We have four Mumble call-ins with four ALSA loopbacks with four Mumble-Ms all in the terminal. We're using Reaper so we can uh, mix the audio properly. We're using the KX Studio Carla so we can use how's this routing bay here. Carla also has other plugins you can use by itself that uh, you may not get with Reaper since Carla, of course, is Linux. And Reaper is using the Wine ASIO driver so that it can come into uh, Jack Audio as well using you know, Linux since they don't have a native Linux version yet. But it works really well with Wine. There'll be some sh uh, extra information in the show notes if you're interested. Thank you for watching.